Hello, and welcome to a foggy episode of We Only Look Thin. Foggy. I am Catherine Weigel, and I have lost less than 150 pounds. <laughs> <laughs> and with me today is... Donald Weigel, and I have lost less than 500 pounds. <laughs> <laughs> you know, if you put it that way, it sounds better. Like, I actually... Let's get serious for a moment. Hello, bienvenue, listeners. Uh, Will Coleman. I uh, we'll talk about it a little bit, but I've uh, this is Catherine, and I've I've usually lost 150 pounds, but now it's more like 148 ish right now. <laughs> wow! But I feel like uh, we should have some sort of like stock market ticker tape oh, on yeah. our website that gives our actual daily weight yeah. loss because That's I'm not sure idea. I can be inspiring at 148 pounds. <laughs> like, does anyone want to listen to this knowing that? No. Like, 148? Like, I'm oh, no longer inspired at all. I, I walk around telling everybody what a, a wonderful inspiration you are and that you're... I literally just said to our daughter that you were a genius and... Now that I know you've only lost 148 pounds, but like, I'm feeling a little what less. What have I done lately is yeah. the question. Like yeah. last weekend, uh, we uh, we actually had a hard time last weekend, I think both of us. And we thought about just maybe ending the show altogether. No, we that were, was like two weeks ago. That was two weeks ago? Yeah, no, I've been pretty Seems good. Seems like only yesterday. I've been back I've been back on track for two weeks. Must be nice. No, I've, yeah. been, I've been back on track too. But I feel like there, I don't know, there's like this finite line where I feel inspiring and then I don't feel inspiring. And me personally knowing that I'm only 148 pounds yeah. successful right now makes me want to just like yeah. close up shop. Yeah. I'm around 100. That's I'm not good. gonna. I'm not gonna. Oh come on! There... You, you usually like accuse me of being too granular. You are like, well, today I've lost one one hundred and two point three. One hundred and two point two. Yeah, that's me. Illogical usually, Vulcan. but you know what? I'm I'm a relaxed guy now. I'm just saying. Around, <laughs> He's actually leaning around back a, around a hundred pounds. There you go. I'm putting my arms behind my head. I'm like, you know, I'm gonna put sunglasses on while we anyway. do this. It, do you think I'm still inspiring a uh, listening audience? Uh, let me know. because <laughs> We'd like to hear about it. We'd like it. to hear about Can it. Can you still be inspired but, by someone who only lost 148 pounds? <laughs> well, there's there are people in our group who actually weigh less than me in our accountability group. Yeah, I don't and know I'm what like, they're coming to you for. I don't know what they're coming to me for. How are they inspired by me? Yeah. They weigh 20 pounds less than me. Like, what do they What do they got? What, what don't they got? They don't have a podcast. Yeah. We've got a podcast. They don't have these fancy it, microphones. It's not the most successful people that get what they want is yeah. the people who do the work and we're doing the work and we're going to have you do the work today you're listening so buckle yes. in so uh, as Catherine alluded to this is a foggy misty so episode foggy. we're going to talk about fog and mist and the gorillas which might in be them. <laughs> lurking in them <laughs> lurking I don't know just don't. Don't no gorillas are lurk? You, are you lurking in your house? Yes. Like in this, like... I am most decidedly lurking. <laughs> You're just peering out windows no, like, I, yeah, suspiciously. I lurk. I'm actually peering right now because my eyeglasses are uh, at the doctor's. You know, you promised me like <laughs> less than 20 minutes ago you weren't going to bring it up again. People don't know about it, though. I am... Uh, I. I have I have a prescription. I'm a I'm an old person, and uh, my glasses are at the doctor right now, being fixed for my. <laughs> She's walking around like Mr. Magoo, like like feeling around, like you know, talking to lamps and having. Oh, pardon me, madam. Did I just? I do it for the comedy. Bumps into a lamp, and then she's like, oh, pardon me, anyway, madam. I didn't know you were visiting. You might be leering or peering, but I'm just squinting a lot. Yeah. So uh, if you hear the squinting, I'm sorry, people. <laughs> I feel like I'm on focus. I can't concentrate. This I've is got why my... we don't have a YouTube channel, because <laughs> I just squint. you just squint all so, the time. So yeah, so as Donald alluded to, uh, this, we're going to fog it up. But before we fog it up, we're going to get to the uh, tip of the week. Tau! Tau, 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 tau. And then we're going to talk we're about doing fogs. the echo effect on that now? We're t doing it for everything. Okay. Um, and then it makes the episode longer. And then we're going to finish <laughs> out with a product of the week. Bow! Yes. yes, which has to do with liquid. It does. Mm, I'll be vague Ooh. until the end, so you'll be excited to listen. Yeah. Well, fog is a form of, uh, of liquid. It's just all part of the... <laughs> I love how I'm... The granular one. <laughs> well, technically, fog is also a liquid. I was trying to d tie it in because it's just in a yeah, different state. It's true. It's true. I do science projects with our daughter. So yeah. we're going to start out with uh, a, a tip of the week. Tip of the week to you. Tip of the week to you. Tow. Tow. You started this, to do like the tip of the week I, to you, and see, then you pulled back. I, I pulled back. Yeah. Um, so this is something... Um, 
that I'm not actually that I don't actually do. So yeah. this is the superiority hat coming on. So. I know. I, I I was sort of figuring out a way to say this like it so it didn't sound like a humble brag, but you went ahead and just bragged about I it. I just bragged about so. it. Well, I'm just grateful that there are things that I don't do. So this is the part where we're going to lead up to the part where we tell you what the tip is. So um <laughs> So we've been the, the podcast is like 25 minutes long and we haven't said anything yet. No, we haven't. So uh, I'll get to I'll, I'll cut it to the chase. Um, delete apps on your phone that make it easy for food to come to your house. Yeah, there we yeah. go. I said See, it. This is something that I I know myself well enough to know that the second I download Uber Eats, the second that that app hits my phone, I'm ordering all the food. It's we're b- bad enough with Amazon. Like, seriously, like, like if the, Amazon delivered pizza in an hour, it would be over. The Amazon delivery guys, like I didn't get something for two days, and they called nine one one. That actually did happen. Well, not once that. We, but. The UPS guy was like. <laughs> Is Don okay? Is he like, okay? What's, like, I haven't what's, delivered uh... anything to the house for four days. <laughs> <laughs> no, he hasn't been eaten by wolves. Yeah. He just uh... No, he's just been uh, ordering from Uber Eats and Postmates and uh, uh, what's the other one? Um, oh, there are many. I'm going to get oh, into DoorDash, it. Oh, DoorDash. DoorDash. I'm going to get into the it. Other one. So um, back in the day, Donald and I are before the interweb. We met before the internet. Uh, we we live before the internet. And we used to do things like order takeout from yeah. takeout menus. We had giant we, buckets of We had a folder. Pay- we, we seriously had a folder that we kept in our kitchen with about... 30 takeout menus. Yeah. In there. And I mean, we had maybe them on 25 on anyway. Speed dial. Yeah. And um, so we used to get a lot. Yeah. Of- I had certain restaurants like, you know, written down the numbers. So, uh, so we would order takeout. Like that is the thing that we did. Yes. But we got to the point where we've joked about it, where we don't really get takeout anymore. Yeah. We're, and, or food delivery. Or, yeah. Any food delivery. Um, but someone in our accountability group talked about Postmates and how that it was kind of ruining their progress because they would get home late. They would uh, not want to cook the meal that they had planned for themselves and they would get Postmates. I thought Postmates was some sort of stamp service. I honestly yeah, I didn't even you could, know what like, it was. Yeah, I thought you could print your stamps at home with it. Um, but... Um, the danger of apps like Uber Eats, Grubhub, DoorDash, Postmates um, is it makes it really easy to get food that is maybe not in your best interest. I do like saying the word Grubhub, though. But like in all of the advertisements for it, it's like fun, thin people like playing yeah. Yahtzee and like being thin and having Thai food. Like, yeah. If I bet you it's mostly people by themselves wearing flannel who just don't want to go out of the house to get food. Right. And um I I am one of you. I am I am of you. Oh, like <clears throat> I don't have any of those apps because I would gain back the entire hundred and two point oh, yeah. three pounds. Yeah, dare like, us. Yeah. Dare us. It it's like late February right now. I would do it by March fifteenth. Well, and I also like we live in California. Um we live in a major metropolitan area. There are actual 30-minute alcohol delivery services. Yeah. Like – Yeah, we got I, a flyer like on our door and it's like a picture of a woman with a beauty mask on and cucumbers and she's holding an alcoholic drink. And it's called uh, Saucy. I don't want to advertise for them. Oh, but, yeah, yeah. But it's like she's like, oh, more time for me time. Ha, ha, ha. Like, yeah. you if, know what? If you don't have time to go out and get your own alcohol, you may need to examine your life choices. So we do have a couple of instances where it is okay to be the kind of person that orders from yeah. DoorDash or Booze Up or Clink or Drizzly <laughs> or Saucy or one of the other seven dwarves of the- Are those all real things? Those are real things. Those are real? Drizzly, Mini Bar, Booze Up, oh, Saucy. Oh my good lord. It makes it sound classy. We live in a if magical you, and terrible time. If you need Boone's Farm, like a bucket of Boone's Farm <laughs> in 30 minutes, like you're not living your best life. A bucket. <laughs> Of Boone's Farm. Do they sell it in buckets? <laughs> Probably. Probably. I, I think they sell them in jugs. Like yeah. anything that is being delivered to you in a jug no, in is fact, not in fact, classy. In general, you should stay away from jugs of anything or buckets of anything. So, but like, like there are some circumstances where it's okay to order from one of those delivery services. Like, like if you're under house arrest, maybe. Yeah, like if you have an ankle bracelet and you'll get shocked, yeah. uh, then that's 
that's the instance where it would be okay. Or yeah, like, perhaps. Or if you have like a terminal illness, way to bring down the party, Catherine. Uh, or yeah. like maybe if you've had your driver's license taken away from too many DUIs. But even then, I would recommend like get on a bicycle or and if, like <laughs> like. If, and definitely don't order from the alcohol delivery service. But if you're like me and you love listening to Rick D's and you want to be the hundredth caller, <laughs> Disco Duck, everyone, Disco Duck, everybody. Um, if you want to be the hundredth caller and you can't leave your phone because, like, you can't leave the house and you're very hungry and you're waiting for the for the phrase that pays, then maybe you can order Uber. Yeah, Eats. <laughs> if you're like if you're glued to the radio and you What's don't actually have noise? a portable radio in 2019. <laughs> Yeah, if, if for some reason you're 1982. For some reason you're stuck inside in your radio <laughs> because there's no other way to listen to it. Or if you're like Donald and ended up in a full body cast and yeah. like you literally cannot yeah, leave the house. Because I flip my vet. It's fine. But unless any of those things are true, delete the app. Do not yeah. make it easy to make a bad choice. The easier we make bad choices the more likely we're to do them so delete them yeah delete them stay away from all of them oh hey this is weird we just got an email while we're recording this a new sponsor wants to sponsor the show they're gonna sponsor us for the rest of our lives so we don't have to work anymore oh it's postmates i don't need stamps people don't need stamps grubhub wants to sponsor the show this is awkward we could just say that they sponsor the show nobody's gonna know we could use like discount codes from other podcasts oh yeah like uh third love bras like just use thirdlove.com forward slash happier yeah um gretchen rubin our friend gretchen let us use that gretchen Yeah, but like, it doesn't hurt us if people are like, "Oh, they're sponsored. They must be like yeah. rolling in it." Yeah, we must be uh, doing it. Yeah, so I don't know why I went blank there. We must be doing a, something. That that whole uh, we got an email thing was was new information to me. So we're we're living on the edge. So yeah, I didn't of, didn't tell her about that in rehearsal. Speaking of living on the edge, we're gonna move on to topic two. Topic we're two. Talk about a woman from the Midwest who went to Africa. Yeah. Diane Fossey. And lived in the mist. She did. She lived in mist and the, <laughs> saw gorillas lurking. <laughs> so, so here's the thing. I have a problem with enjoying talking about movies I haven't seen. <laughs> it, feel, it feels much more free to talk about it right. in a liberal context. Right. We're just going to wing it. We're just going to pretend we know what we gorillas in the mist was about. We might have asked Google about what the movie was about. But, uh, but no, we're actually talking about fog and, uh, and how it applies to weight loss. Yes. Or, or the lack of weight loss. So Diane Fossey was a scientist who seriously like went to Africa and she observed gorillas and um, was concerned about poachers and um, and you know basically lived with the gorillas and sort of became one a member of the became a gorilla <laughs> became a gorilla. And that's where McGilla Gorilla came from. <laughs> McGilla Gorilla and Great Ape, Ape. Ape. <laughs> came back. No, but okay. So so we all know that you can Google it. Google the movie title if you'd like. But Donald actually had a real life event happen this week. Uh, not gorilla based, but uh, but habit based. Uh, someone, uh, why don't you tell the story about how someone found out you were inspiring and yeah, what happened? I don't know. Somehow, and I'm not entirely sure how, but. Photos, or it's getting around the TV show that I'm working on that uh, Catherine and I used to weigh a lot more than we do it's right like now. It's like the Kardashians, like, yeah. just letting you know I'm going to Casa Vega today at noon if you want to come by and take photos. Like, yeah. Oh. Oh, did I drop this picture of me at 200 pounds? <laughs> did I accidentally leave these uh, We Only Look Thin business cards <laughs> sitting around at the craft how service table? How embarrassing. Yeah, how embarrassing. So um, a... He's one of the security guards, a woman that I work with, uh, came up to me and she's like, uh, hey, I saw photos of you and your wife when you used to weigh a lot more. <laughs> and I like, I didn't ask her how she stumbled across these photos. Um, but anyway. You've got a car wrap with just us, <laughs> pictures yeah. of us. So essentially, um, she... You know, she started asking me for advice and said that she's had all kinds of uh, issues um, that... She's had uh, diabetes for a number of years and um, a very high A1C level and has just had no success getting it under control. And the latest thing she was doing was she was giving up everything white, that she was staying away from bread and pasta and... Um, Berry. And, uh, yeah. Very white. <laughs> very white. 
Yeah. And um, that she asked me for advice. And it, it really, you know, it, it was really interesting to me. You know, we've talked on this podcast about these things over and over again. And, you know, face to face, I don't get asked for a ton of advice face to face. And it was sort of nice. I, I stood and spoke with her for probably 15 or 20 minutes while I should have been working. And um, went over the basics and just tried to tell her, you know, start with looking at where you are now and observe what your life is like now. She had actually just gotten a Fitbit. And I said, you know, don't try and change anything right away. Just observe and figure out where you are. Figure out how much you're actually eating. Fossey. <laughs> I said, when I when I first started doing this, I... I thought I was probably eating like everybody else. And then when I actually started really weighing and measuring calories, realized I was over 4,000 a day. And it didn't feel like I was eating 4,000 calories a day. You know, in my mind, I was eating just like everybody else was. Well, and on top of that, I remember on the weekends being like, oh, wow, we've got to go to Target and Costco. Like, that's a big workout day. I've got to get my trail mix ready because I'm like, yeah. I'm out and about and I got to tank up for the activity. And then realizing, like, I went to Costco yesterday and I was like, do do do, getting steps, 1,000. Okay, that was fine. But that's not going to like break my like breakfast burrito yeah, combination. For sure. Like, so, so yeah, so being an observer. A Diane Fossey of your own life. Yeah, and I talked about mindset and, you know, all the things we talk about with, you know, there's no finish line and all of that. And it was sort of a get back to basics, like figure out where you are, figure out how many steps you're getting right now. And as a security guard, she actually could be like walking around all the time and instead sits in a chair and, and uh, you know, watches trucks and things. You can like sneak in, like... People don't even know you're getting fit. They just think that you're helpful. And I, you know, I, was I do like, that actually I was all like, the time. Look, you'll be the guard who walks around, and everybody will be impressed. They'll be like, all the other ones are sitting down, and she's actually up walking around, like looking at stuff. And you can build your step count that way. And it was kind of a kind of invigorating for me to go over all of the basics of you know how I got started doing this and taking the baby steps and just observing and not putting any. Um, any judgment on what I was doing. And um, it it really was a nice reminder to me as I was talking about all of this, uh, of the habits that I've put in place and the things that I need to do to keep this maintaining this. Well, and I think I have an issue with wanting to almost be like the matrix and just download all valuable content to people all at once. Because we've actually had people come to us like family members and yeah. friends who go like, oh gosh, I just found out I've got fatty liver disease. Like, what do I do? And then I'm like, well, A, B, C, D, G, F, like. Yeah. And it's too much information. And um, I I apologize uh, in advance. No, after after the fact for trying to put too much on people at once and really starting with what's right in front of you is kind of the way to go. And I I made the analogy of fog. Like if you have to drive 100 miles and the fog is really thick, you have to drive very slowly and you have to focus on what is right in front of you. And for as much as we say you don't have to figure it all out today, you have the rest of your life to develop your habits. Yeah. You have to start now and you have to start with what is right in front of you and what you're able to do in the moment. So like with uh, the security guard that Donald talked about, like – what could she do that day? She could track her steps. She's got the Fitbit. See what she's doing now and try to add some. Yeah, and I habits. even said, look, if that seems too overwhelming, if it seems too overwhelming to start tracking your food and your steps, just do one of those things to start. Like, and just do it for a week. Like, don't put any judgment on it. Just, you know, try and focus on what's right in front of you and, um, you know, put your low beams on, not your high beams in the fog. And to continue the fog analogy and worry about what's right in front of you. Well, and on top of that, there's this weird, and I, I know I just kind of talked about it, this this two worlds that we live in. One is that we have time to figure it out. But on the other hand, if we don't start planning now, our future selves aren't suddenly going to be prepared for 
taking care of ourselves. Yeah. That it, it is a practice like yoga or violin, like or or learning a language. You don't just suddenly know how to speak Mandarin. Yeah. It takes practice, it takes purpose, it takes um discipline. And Imagining that at some point your life is going to be more relaxed, that when the kids get out of the house, when the job is over, when it's summertime, when the weather changes, expecting that future self to suddenly have everything lined up to be perfect is not realistic and it's not going to happen. And I waited until I was 41 years old to realize that I had to just start where I was with the resources that I had, it didn't have to do with, I didn't have to spend any money to start losing weight. I didn't have to uh, join a gym. I didn't have to clutter my mind with 50 ideas. Yeah. I just had to start and I had to care about my current self. Um, even when I didn't believe, like, I didn't think I was going to lose 100 pounds. Yeah, I haven't set foot in a gym, you know, this entire time. Uh, you know, it took me two years to lose the weight and I've kept it off for a year and I've not stepped foot in a gym the entire time. But what I have done is built up habits that I rely upon and that I continually go back to even even on, you know, days, weeks where I get thrown off, I eat things I, I don't, you know, want to eat as part of my plan. Um, I have the habits in place so that I can go back to that and keep doing it. Well, and two, I mean, we we have very many episodes of this podcast. Many of the topics overlap. We've got, uh, you know, the canary in a coal mine. We've got Occam's razor. We all know kind of what to do. But when we don't observe our habits, when we don't pay attention to what we do unconsciously every day, like someone else in our group talked about not measuring their peanut butter the other day. And yeah. it was like a record scratch. Like, what do you mean you don't track your peanut butter? Like, that's what you do. Like, yeah, what, you know, and but it's like, I'm actually going to quote Carl Jung. Ooh. Actually, I'm not sure. Jung? Jung. 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 It's Jung. Jung. Um, so uh, the quote is as follows and is now happening. And here it goes. <laughs> Wow. Okay. Until you make the unconscious conscious, it will direct your life and you will call it fate. Like 41 Boom. years. Oh, mic if, drop. Carl Jung is dropping a mic. Yeah. Which probably didn't even exist. Old when, school. Yeah. Um, when he said that. But forever young. That's what the podcast oh. is. No, 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 no. All right. Joke, joke, joke. Um, But we go through so much of our life unconscious of our actions. Um, it's been said that studies have shown that like people always put the same shoe on every day the same way. Like you always start with your left shoe. When you take a shower, you always oh, start. Wow. I don't know if I do that. You do. Wow. Like people have patterns of of unconscious habits and behavior, whether it's uh, brushing your teeth, starting with the right side or the top or the bottom. Oh, yeah, like, that I definitely do. You, you unconsciously go through so many parts of your life, and some of them are neutral habits. Like, it doesn't matter what shoe you put on first. But grabbing uh, a handful of pretzels as you go into the pantry, taking a bite out of your, your kid's um, – you know, sandwich when they're done with it, grabbing a handful of candy when you go into yeah. the office. There are so many unconscious ways that we pollute our day and our habits that we don't pay attention to. And I had to, in January, I decided to stop eating off of our daughter's plate and I had to make a conscious effort. And I, I did pretty well. And then I can't remember, like something came by and I almost ate off of her plate. Yeah. And I was like, well, wait a minute. Like that's the old habit coming back. And it, is so easy to think we have to have a complicated answer, like not eating white food, like like deleting an entire color of, yeah. of food from your palate isn't going to change your life forever. Deciding that those small habits, eating off your kid's plate, taking an extra bite, not measuring your, your peanut butter, like those hidden calories add up every day. Yeah, for sure. And so what we're what we're suggesting is and bringing this back to Diane Fossey observing the gorillas, observe yourself like you're a gorilla in the mist. <laughs> <laughs> um d d you know, try and detach yourself from your habits. You know, a lot of times we've been doing these things our whole lives that we don't ever stop and ask ourselves if we're doing the right thing. Or we we mindlessly do so many things that we don't pay attention to. So step back, say to yourself, 
okay, what is my mindset? Do I have a mindset that is, I've got to lose weight quickly, that I've, you know, that once it's off, I'll be fixed. You know, all of these things that we, that we've realized did not work for us. Um, observe how you're eating, observe what you're doing. Are you really putting in the effort? Are you really weighing and measuring things? Or are you eyeballing? Are you tracking things? Um, your exercise, are you, are you moving as much as you think you are? You know, even if your exercise like me is just walking, like I thought I moved as much as a, you know, regular person. And when I first started actually tracking it, I was getting less than 5,000 steps a day, a lot of days. And, you know, I really had to, you know, be honest with myself and, and adjust what I was doing to increase that. And eventually the weight started coming off. Well, and two, I think, you know, we've got, you know, including ourselves, we have people listening who are in all stages of their journey. Some people are maybe just starting out, some are in the middle, some are maintaining. And no matter where we are, we can level up. And I know we talked about this in a recent episode, but really being present in your day, not getting lost on what's going to happen next week or the trip you're taking to Europe in six months and the end result that you want it's the daily habits that get you to where you want to be. It's driving in the fog, driving slowly and paying attention to what is right in front of you and the choice that you can make in the moment, I think is really critical. And I get lost in that too. I, you know, I've talked about not looking at the big picture, focusing on like, oh, I had a bad day. What's the big deal? Oh, I had a bad, bad day. What's the big deal? And I actually, I, I mathed it up. And realized yeah. that I um, I had uh, ten out of twenty days I had overeaten uh, in February. Yeah, um, and that's a fifty percent. Everybody, yeah, bummer. Fifty percent. What police. is the big deal? Yeah. What's the big deal? The big deal is that I'm I've only lost one hundred and forty eight pounds now. <laughs> so. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, once not inspiring, inspiring Catherine Weigel. Yeah. But it's that erosion that we just don't pay attention to. Whatever stage we're in, that's when the weight comes back. That's when we we think it is too much for us to bear. Like I, uh, my, you know, the the canaries in a coal mine. My pants are a little bit tighter right now. I'm on a a, a larger notch in our in my belt in our belt. Our my belt. belt. We have one belt. <laughs> we have one belt. <laughs> One shared, our get-along belt. One, yeah, get-along <laughs> belt. But those justifications of like, ah, well, ah, I was sick. Ah, it was my time of the month. Ah, but, 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 but. Like, those stories are starting to repeat in my head. And so I've I've uh, started paying attention to my daily habits again. Yeah, you've stepped back and you've become, you've like accessed the Vulcan side of you and I detached have. yourself from your emotions and observed like a scientist, like you're the gorilla in the mist. I am both the gorilla and the scientist. And the scientist, and there's mist somehow. But those unconscious, going back to the Carl Jung, um, Carl Jung thing, until you make the unconscious conscious, it will direct your life and you will call it fate. I'm up on the scale. It's fate. Like, who knows why it happened? Oh, gosh. Like, I, like my pants are tight. <laughs> why is that happening? Oh, because I've been eating 200 calories of peanut butter three times a day instead of the 70 calories I thought I was getting. Yeah. Like, that math happens whether we count it or not. And the more present we can be in our choices, the more present we can be in the excuses that we make, um, I think the better we can be. Agreed. Agreed. Do we feel good about that? I don't know. I think we feel good about that. I'm, uh, I'm feeling very pumped up about habits, and uh, we can talk more about that. In another episode. In a future episode. Yes, we're reading a very exciting book right now, but that is not the product of the week, so I'm not going to talk about it. So in summary, uh, be both the gorilla and the scientist <laughs> <laughs> and dispassionately observe what you're doing. And Vulcanize you, it. You can figure this out one step at a time. Yeah. So, I mean, really, like, I'm I'm really excited about just being present because I want to be inspiring again. You're inspiring me right now. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much. So, um, so yeah, so we're going to move over to uh, the, the product of the week. Pow! Pow, everybody. Pow. Um, so the product of the week um, is is uh, something you might already have or might not, but it is a Contigo water bottle. There, mm. I said it. I didn't do a lot of predicating. Yeah. I just said it. So um, Contigo, I go. Yeah. Or something. You go. Um, so water is an important part of our daily lives. Very important. 
And uh, I was listening to... Nine out of ten humans can't live without it. (laughs) So um, I try to reinvent uh, and perfect the way that I do things. And uh, I've talked about drinking water before and little tips and tricks on how to get it. But I was listening to another podcast that talked about uh, buying three water bottles and filling them all up. It is uh, you are breaking down a barrier to drinking water like you you drink one glass i don't know how much i had what do i do Uh, but she suggested filling three 24 ounce water bottles and putting them all in your refrigerator and then having that be your water goal for the day that's nearly 60 ounces of water (laughs) (laughs) we're not into math um but uh but i realized i wasn't drinking very much water um it's colder months right now but filling up three water bottles and having them in the refrigerator, ready to go, limits my barrier to achieving my goal. So we've talked before about the convenience of convenience. Like, yeah. oh, I got to wash a water bottle. How do I do it? Um, so uh, the con- And what, why don't you tell them what's so good about Contigo in particular? I'm going to tell you what's I mean, there's lots of water it. bottles. You don't have to use Contigo. So uh, uh, my friend Deanna, our friend, yours and mine. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to name names. Uh, Deanna has a Contigo water bottle. It's uh, 32 ounces, and it has the little uh, fill line uh, measuring thing on the side so you can see how much you're drinking. It comes with a built-in straw and a little, like, nozzle to uh, to uh, sip out of, um, so it is easy for travel. Yeah. Uh, you, can, you can have it in your car. It, it's leak-proof. It's spill-proof. We got our daughter one, too, and she does this cool thing uh, where she takes a carabiner and... Um, uh, hooks it to her lunch bag that she carries over her shoulder, and then on the way to school, she just kind of like flips it up, like right to her <laughs> mouth. It's Guess pretty what? sweet. It's kind of tricking her into drinking water. Yeah, like, don't tell her. I don't tell her, but she has a thirty-two ounce one, and it's great. Um, yeah, but uh, they come in twenty-four ounce. They come in thirty-two ounce. Uh, the twenty-four ounce fits in my uh, car. Uh, Cup holder. Cup holder. Um, so I have actually four water bottles right now. But it the more the easier you can make a practice, the better it is. I know how much water I'm getting. Uh, they're uh, they're portable and they actually have little clips on them. I don't know if she knows that, but she uses an extra carabiner and she doesn't need to because it actually has. Clips. You, can, <laughs> you can clip it onto whatever you need eh, clipped on. Carabiner. Your cool. get along belt. You can yeah. clip it to whatever you like. Um, so so yeah. So uh, I'll put a link to it in the show notes and um, and maybe I'll even tweet out a link to it hmm how about that excellent uh so yeah so that is the product of the week i'm loving mine uh my my three slash four of them and uh, it's made drinking water easier and more funner pow everybody product of the week product of the week thank you you. so much for listening to us uh we really appreciate every single one of you um we've gotten a lot of really nice reviews on itunes and um if you haven't left us one yet and you're feeling generous uh and you've gotten something out of this podcast uh one way to pay us back would be to go on itunes and give us a rating and a short review it could just be anything yeah say hey those guys are great we love them Whatever you want to say, something uh, something short, snappy, we will take it all. Um, you can also find us on Facebook. Uh, you can find us on Instagram at We Only Look Thin. Uh, and I have tried to step up my Twitter game. You can find us on Twitter at uh, We Only Look Thin. Yeah, and you can email us at We Only Look Thin at Google Gmail dot com. Google. <laughs> <laughs> We only look thin at gmail.com. Yes. And uh, yeah. we really appreciate listening. You can yeah. subscribe to us wherever you found this podcast. Yeah. And uh, just remember if you don't know your Diane Fossey from a Bob Fossey, <laughs> <laughs> jazz hands. <laughs> just remember that Donald and I are an inspiration. Asian, Asian, Asian. Asian. The information that you hear on this podcast is for informational purposes only. The hosts are not medical professionals. You should always consult with your doctor, nurse, or other certified health professional before beginning any diet or fitness program.